I've already been here too long. I'd like to call tonight's Summers of Planning Board meeting to order. Anna, please call the roll. Ron LeHoulier. Here. Jason Berry. Here. Jeremy Rhodes. Here. Chris Horton. Here. Mark Richardson. Here. David Witham. Here. First item, approval of minutes of the meeting of September 18, 2024. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Motion made by Mr. Horton. Seconded by Mr. Rhodes. Discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Abstain? Next item is committee reports. You have the land use board reports. The uh, summary, is there any comment on those? Seeing none, we'll move on to city council report. Mr. Witham. Uh, no report tonight. Next, we move on to Stratford, Stratford Regional Planning Commission, SRPC update. Mr. Richardson. No report tonight, but we're having a presentation, so. Thank you. Eyes on 30, 2030 committee, Mr. Berry. No report, Mr. Chair. Community Power Coalition, Mr. Horton. Uh, community, uh, the committee has sunset, so I will have no further reports on community power. All right, thank you. Housing committee, Mr. Horton. Uh, Mayor, housing committee met th tonight at five prior to this meeting. Uh, we worked on our goals that we want to focus on and what phases those fill in, uh, fall into. And then additionally, as you folks know, we talked about ADU just after. So that's all I got. All right, thank you. Next item, item three, Natural Resources and Land Use Master Plan Chapters presentation by Stratford Regional Planning Commission. Director Mayors, anything to add? No, we have the folks from Stratford Regional Planning Commission here. Uh, they've been working on the natural resources and land use chapter, and they're just going to give a, uh, an overview of what they've worked on. Thank you, Michelle. Just one. So we. Yeah, let's just go. We don't have a PowerPoint, but we figured we could pull it up if we, you know, if it benefits everybody to be able to see it. And we have extra copies. Right. So while he's putting up the computer, you want to get your computer? Um, hey, my name is Lisa Murphy, and I've been here a few times, so um, you all look familiar to me, and I'm sure I look familiar to you. Um, with me tonight is is uh, Mike. Polizzati. You got it. <laughs> He's one of our newer members, and I haven't had to pronounce his name yet. So um, he's going to be giving uh, the first part of this presentation, um, and that is on the land use chapter. And um, so, if you've, can we uh, shoot it on the screen? Maybe our technician can come in and help hook that up right here. Yeah. Let's see. And turn on the project. Huh? And does anyone need a paper copy? No, we have them. Okay. All right. Well, like Lisa mentioned, uh, my name is Mike Palazzotti. I am the Economic Development Planner at Stratford Regional Planning Commission, um, and I am the lead author for the land use chapter um, for the city of Summersworth. Um, I will just say if folks have feedback um, as we kind of walk through this uh, draft chapter. I think it's fine if you all just chime in or, you know, if you have feedback too that's a little bit more substantive. Um, I can give everyone like my contact information and everything card and you can email it our way too as we continue working through this draft. Um, but just to provide a little overview of the chapter and a structure of it. So we uh, structured this chapter to have a uh, intro and overview of the community engagement efforts um, throughout the city over the past couple of months um, for both land use and natural resources. And then specifically for the land use chapter, four themes kind of percolated to the top after all of these discussions we had with municipal leadership, um, with board members and committee members, and then also members of the public. 
Um, so those four themes are listed there on the screen. There's sustainable and smart growth, um, equitable and inclusive development, access and connectivity, and infrastructure resilience. And then our fifth theme is really that forward-looking mapping the future um, section of the report um, where we're highlighting some options for future land use and kind of the vision surrounding that. And uh, all of these themes, like I mentioned, were really uh, developed um, through this community engagement uh, efforts and all these different activities, so they're really uh, reflective of the priorities that were kind of gathered throughout all the different um, uh, meetings and, and sessions that I'll talk about a little bit more. Um, so we have our introduction and our overview of community engagement. Um, so we developed a pretty comprehensive uh, outreach and engagement plan with city staff um, in Summersworth to make sure that we were hearing as many voices as possible. Um, so there were four meetings that were held from February 2024 through August 2024 that engaged members of various boards in the city um, and committees in the city. And then there was also a public community workshop that was held in May 2024 where about a dozen people, um, members of the public, showed up and were able to voice their opinions and workshop different ideas um, and share kind of what their priorities and visions were surrounding land use for the city of Summersworth. Um, in addition to that, we also uh, worked with the city to um, di um, disseminate out a, a citywide survey. Um, so there were social media campaigns surrounding that, um, email blasts, our newsletter, city publications, um, and a poster and flyer with a QR code and link that was also sent out in water bills too. So we tried really hard to make sure that um, this survey was sent out to as many people as possible. And at the end, we received over 300 responses. Um, which was pretty robust. Um, so we were very, very happy to see that as we were um, working on developing the different themes um, and priorities for this chapter. So the next area um, kind of dives into uh, make sure I'm on the right page, uh, existing land use um, within the city. So this kind of just provides some ground setting um, and talks about uh, the different land use patterns that currently exist in Summersworth. Um, and where they're located throughout the city. So within this section, there are, uh, there's a map of existing land use in the city, um, and then a, a brief overview of some different categories of land use, um, discussing them here, and then also um, a more cohesive table that really breaks down um, the current land use story within the city. Again, for that ground setting before we dive into the different themes. So the first theme, like I mentioned, was um, centered surrounds, uh, around sustainable and smart growth. So this section really kind of uh, discusses at a higher level the need for balanced and sustainable, uh, sustainable growth throughout the city um, and really uh, reflecting the community's priorities to leverage existing density that already exists in the city um, and existing infrastructure while also um, uh, ensuring that land that is not developed and may be in conservation or land that could be in conservation is preserved. Um, so some of the data that's presented in this section um, includes some items from the citywide survey as shown up on the screen um, where um, a, a significant majority of respondents highlighted that their preference for future development within the city is in areas that are already developed um, and kind of densifying the places that already have density and infrastructure throughout the city. The uh, second theme, which is equitable and inclusive development, and this section really centers around uh, fostering uh, a community where all residents have access to opportunities, to different resources they need, um, and ensuring that they can access all the different assets that the city has to offer and the region has to offer. Um, this includes also um, being mindful about ensuring that there's a big range of housing types within the city and affordability as well so that folks can afford to live here. Um, and then the data presented in this section uh, kind of centers around a couple of different topics, one of them being urban heat islands um, to highlight priorities um, that were raised throughout community engagement about preserving green spaces within the city um, and also street trees and streetscapes too um, that can help make walkability a bit more bearable in certain parts of the city in summer heat or different things like that. Uh, the th and then the maps are presented too uh, in line with the text. The uh, third theme is access and connectivity, and this theme um, was pretty, pretty much one of the major ones that kind of percolated to the top right away um, for a lot of folks um, throughout the survey and the community engagement efforts. Um, but this really centers around the community's priorities for land use patterns that really bolster walkability, 
um, cycling infrastructure, uh, safety and accessibility on sidewalks and in crosswalks, and also ensuring that the community as a whole is very, very well connected. So there's also discussions about um, the desire for expanded uh, transit access through coast um, and different expanded routes throughout the city. Um, and some of the data presented in this section uh, includes a couple of different analyses that SRPC conducted. One of them is our Pathways to Play, um, which Summersworth was the pilot for that a few years ago. Um, that highlights a, a significant portion of, of residents within the city, actually the highest portion of residents in Summersworth compared to all of our other communities in the SRPC region live within half a mile of a recreation asset. Um, so that kind of highlights the need and kind of the ease of improving walkability um, and connectivity throughout the city to make sure that folks can access those different recreation resources. Um, some of the other data presented in this section, just to scroll through, um, is also our bicycle level of stress, uh, traffic stress analysis, which highlights uh, different areas throughout the city where uh, cycling uh, may be more challenging, uh, depending on traffic and width of shoulders and accessibility to bike lanes if they exist, um, and kind of highlighting areas for opportunity and improvements there. Um, and there was some additional feedback too that was highlighted in the survey on this table as well. Um, individuals were asked to rank or are to select different activities or different priorities that should be encouraged within Summersworth. And the tallest bar here um, was um, promoting um, safe places to walk um, throughout the community. So um, most respondents selected that, um, hence it being the, the highest bar up on that table. Um, so it, it was identified as a priority for respondents to the survey through some of those community engagement efforts. The uh, fourth theme centers around infrastructure resilience, and this takes on infrastructure resilience from a couple of different angles. Um, so there's that traditional kind of resilience to, you know, storms or climate-related um, things that may happen, but also resilience to things like economic shocks as well. And we were able to slot this in with infrastructure resilience um, due to some of the uh, themes that were lifted throughout the chapter through the community engagement efforts surrounding densifying certain areas and also the desire for mixed use in certain areas. So some of the discussion throughout this section of the chapter has to do with how mixed use areas are more resilient to economic shocks and economic challenges. Um, and then some of the other things presented throughout this section uh, have to do with stormwater management and watersheds and the impacts that um, you know improperly managed stormwater can have on different natural resources throughout the city um, and the different waterways throughout the city. So highlighting um, priorities there surrounding improvements to stormwater management is a, is a big piece of this section as well. Um, and some of the other data that's presented throughout this, tra uh, this section of the chapter also has to do with uh, traffic volumes. Um, and that ties back to some of that mixed use development and density as well um, to try to reduce car trips within the city, um, uh, uh, local car trips within the city by densifying certain areas and creating more mixed use development. Um, and then, like I said, we also uh, share some other maps here as well about um, impervious surfaces and stormwater runoff um, and have a discussion there about you know, different forward-looking priorities for the city there. And then the uh, fifth section, which we call Theme 5, Mapping Our Future. Um, this section really highlights several things, including the constraints to development within the city, um, which are some of the, the wetlands and the conserved areas. And it also includes several of the build-out analyses that SRPC has done in the past um, surrounding the housing chapter that was recently adopted and, and some other uh, more regional uh, analyses as well. Um, so within this section, there are discussions and data that are presented about the number of buildable lots within the city, where those are located, um, and kind of the limits surrounding um, development and expansion um, of housing and business and different areas like that. Um, within this section, we also highlight some of the future land use goals and also the future land use map and analysis um, at the very end of the chapter with the last map. And this was developed uh, through the community engagement efforts, so listening to the feedback there, some of our build-out analysis as well, um, and highlighting areas that have existing infrastructure and existing density um, as opportunities for the future for different types of density, and then also different areas um, for expanded conservation efforts as well throughout the city. I, I did see on one of your matrices back a bit ago, developed land at almost 50%. Uh, how does that compare to other communities? It seems steep, but 
Yeah, I, so I, I don't have the answer to that right now, but I could get it for you. Um, I do know that Summersworth, uh, based on some of the analyses in the housing chapter from a couple of months ago, um, under current zoning, uh, and based on the current number of existing buildable lots, is that build out will happen very quickly in the city. Um, and Summersworth is unique as it's one of the smallest communities uh, land-wise. Which, which speaks to some of the survey results to enhance density in our already uh, populated areas. So yes, yes. They kind of work hand in glove, if you will. Yes, and folks, uh, I, I hope that this came through through uh, my presentation, but folks uh, throughout the community engagement were very, very conscious about balancing that need for development and also conser uh, conserving existing green spaces and making sure that the city doesn't become just one big development, um, but making sure that natural resources and natural assets are definitely conserved. Um, and then the final part of the chapter, um, after all of the maps and all of the tables, is a, uh, a matrix or table of the thematic goals broken down. Um, and then all of the specific actions to meet these goals within these thematic areas that are talked about um, throughout the narrative of the different sections of the chapter, but they're just broken out here um, very clearly um, so that folks can see those. And uh, these actions within each goal uh, are ranked for, uh, with the highest feasibility and highest impact being the ones at the top and then uh, going down from there. And those rankings came from um, an action ranking survey that we sent to the planning board members. Um, to be able to share their opinions on what they felt was the most uh, impactful and most feasible. Um, so that's how all of these are ordered. And uh, this chapter, uh, we also uh, share a couple of resources and sources down below, um, but this chapter we were able to include all of the tables and maps in line with the text to keep the narrative going, um, so we don't have a big appendix at the end, but we're able to have everything within, within that narrative so folks can see it as they're reading. Uh, so I'm happy to uh, try to answer any questions individuals may have or take any feedback and take notes down, but if folks kind of have more substantive feedback or they need to look at the document a little bit more, um, I'm happy to give uh, folks my business card and we can have a conversation over the phone or chat over email um, and we can try to incorporate any edits we'll have. Any questions on the board? Uh, so if I'm hearing you correctly, this is still somewhat in draft form? Yes, this is still a draft. So uh, It would be helpful. I, I appreciate having the hard copy, but could it be made electronically to us as a PDF, just in an email or something like that? That would be great. Sure. Mr. Richardson. It was, Dave. <laughs> I missed it. Yeah, it's... It was, it was, I was, I believe it was on the reminder of the tonight's meeting down there. Is it so you can look at it there? Just look back and you'll see it. Um, are you going over the uh natural resource plan too? So okay. I will pass it off. To I, I just want to say before you get started, I'm glad that this got a, a chapter of its own. Um, but I'll let you start then before I comment. Okay, thanks. All right. Yes, thank you for that good introduction, <laughs> Mark. Um, uh, so uh, similar to the housing chapter and the land use chapter, um, we kept the theme idea going. Um, and Do you want to work this while I? Thanks. Um, so the the four themes for the natural resources were sustainable and, and smart growth. Uh, theme two was equitable and inclusive development. Theme three is uh, access and connectivity. And I am reading the wrong one. Oh. Like not <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I was thinking the intent the intention was I was going to be taking notes because there were going to be lots of comments from everybody so um, that's why I had his open um, all right so the four themes are the um, green spaces natural amenities and sustainable development um, theme two is land conservation trails and connectivity theme three was environmental stewardship and protection and theme four is education outreach and leadership development um, so, 
<clears throat> so with the natural resource chapter, natural resources are always a very interesting conundrum. Um, we all want them. We all want them to help maintain our rural community. But there's sometimes conflicts with development. So, um, you know, balancing the natural resource protection with allowing some development is, is often a challenge in communities. Um, it's, it's as, as Mark mentioned, it's nice to have a um, chapter of its own. Uh, it's nice that we went that way. Um, and so this chapter looks at the environmental attributes, topography, soils, water resources, and conservation land, and it helps guide the city in the land use decisions. Um, Theme one, as I mentioned, green spaces, natural amenities, and sustainable development. Um, this first table gives a breakdown of the acreage and the percentage of cities that each of these uh, attributes have. Um, I don't know if there's any questions about those. And then we break down into water resources and surface waters and aquifers, um, aquifer transmissivity. Um, most of the town has a very low transmissivity, 64.8%, um, um, but you do have some high areas uh, which are what, around the wells, town well. And a lot of what this chapter includes is mapping. Um, first map is water resources. And it also, besides just the water resources, it includes the 100-year and the 500-year flood zone. Now here's the aquifer transmissivity that I mentioned. You can see the uh, higher areas are up in the northern portion and also right in the town center. Next, we get to forest and agricultural lands. Uh, this chapter, this theme, uh, portion of the theme talks about farmland soils and soil drainage. Uh, here is a soil drainage table that shows the prime farmland, farmland of statewide importance, very poorly drained soils and poorly drained soils. Next, we have forest land and agricultural land uh, map. And I'm going to keep going. Farmland soils, prime farmland, and farmland of statewide importance. Then we move on to the soil drainage. Again, mentioned poorly drained and very poorly drained. And that takes us into theme two, which is land conservation, trails, and connectivity. Um, in this theme, we talk about the conservation lands and the importance of um, land protection through conservation. Um, also mentioned with this is un unfragmented lands. Um, those are lands that are parcels of lands that are contiguous to each other so that it allows for connectivity. Uh, so it allows for wildlife movement and habitation. Oh. I had to get this off. I'm a tech person. You didn't know that. All right, thanks. This map shows the conservation land. As you can see, there's um, conservation land is in the green, and then there's also the coastal conservation plan conservation focus areas. Those are areas that um, are regionally beneficial. They move um, from one town to the other. As you can see, the overlap on the maps. Um, so those are important areas that you would that would benefit uh, 
several towns uh, if they were conserved. Unfragmented lands, as I mentioned, uh, this is a way to uh, keep uh, long parcels uh, that are dedicated uh, either through conservation or through easements um, to allow for wildlife passage. Theme three, environmental stewardship and protection. Um, we have the different habitats in the chart right there. This is from the um, Wildlife Action Plan. And it gives a breakdown of what the town has, or the city has, per um, each of the habitats. Uh, the, chart, the chart below that is the highest ranked habitat in New Hampshire and the highest ranked habitat in the biological region. And it provides percentage as well. Habitat land types is the next map, and uh, it's a little bit of a busy map, as you can see, um, and it goes through each of those habitats that I mentioned up above. Habitat tiers, this is the highest ranked habitat in New Hampshire and the highest ranked habitat in the biological region. So next we have the co-occurrence map, which is going to be on the next page. Um, scroll down to it. All right, so this is a map that was created um, with different layers uh, to show where the co-occurrence of all of those attributes that I just mentioned that are high quality. Um, this this adds all of the layers together and um, provides a, 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 an idea of where if the highest concentration of uh, your highest priorities probably lie uh, in terms of looking for conservation land. The last theme is education, outreach, and leadership development. Um, one of the uh, Recurring themes that I hear from town to town is um, the, con the concern of what's going to happen to the uh, natural resources as we age out. Um, quite a few uh, communities have said they're, they're losing Conservation Commission folks and they want to be able to teach the younger folks all about the local uh, habitat, the local concerns. Um, so that's something that's you know, going to be a challenge, and hopefully we can find ways to draw additional people in. But you're not alone on that one. Then we go to the natural resource goals and actions. And again, the goals match up with the uh, themes. Uh, so uh, the first one is the theme of uh, the first theme is green spaces, natural amenities, and substantial development. As you can see, goal one fits that very appropriately. Um, each of the themes, or I'm sorry, each of the goals has several actions, usually three or four actions to help meet that goal. And those are all shown on the right column. So are there any questions? I know that's a quick run through, but a lot of this is mapping, and I could stand here all night and talk about mapping, but you're not going to get very far with your meeting. All right. And again, this is in draft form still and was emailed to me that I deleted, so I got to go find it. Yeah. Um, thank you. Is it, is it premature to put these up on the website where they're still in draft form? or? No, we could put them up on the website now comments anybody have any comments on either of the uh, chapters or questions or concerns I'll just comment and say that um, I think you guys done a great job compiling all the feedback surveys information and and really put it into a form that's easy to well maybe it's in 
It's a lot of information, but uh, definitely develop and help and develop those goals and actions to 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 get to meeting the, the themes that you outlined as well. So yes, I think, again, great job. Um, and uh, I certainly need more time to read through and, and look over, but uh, it's a, a well put together product. Thank you. Uh, you know, I've been doing planning a lot of years, and this has been a great community to work with. Um, the, the input that we got from the different uh, outreach has been more than what I expected. So, um, you know, it was a joy working in this community. So, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I, thanks very much for all of this. I think in the sessions that I attended, um, certainly, you know, there was lively conversation and you listened and paid attention. And these are the results of those meetings and the surveys and everything else. And I'm glad to hear the number of people that responded to the survey. Um, the thing I have about um, this whole part of it, the um, natural resources that we have, the, the number that sticks out in my mind here is that we have 34% forested land. Mm -hmm. I would bet that would be a surprise to most people living in Summersworth. Um, sad to say, probably the most people who know about where the forested lands are and use the forested lands are probably the homeless because there is no public access to that land. And it would be extremely nice to have recreational, passive recreational access to much of the land that is available left here in Summersworth, uh, whether it's for hiking or cross-country skiing or whatever uh, people wanted, bird watching, you know, looking for uh, different kinds of species of leaves or whatever. Um, I, I, I think it's, it's, to me, it was a surprise that we have that much forested land. And again, as we're going about our daily lives and driving around through the city or walking around through the city, we don't notice it. Mm -hmm. And we don't notice it because we don't have access to it. So that's throughout this, you make reference to, you know, and even in the, uh, the land use one with green space and that kind of thing, you make reference to green space. Um, accessibility is important. I can't say that word often enough for the enjoyment of the community to be able to use those resources. So that's my comment. And if, uh, to go along with that, the, the map, uh, figure seven, the conservation lands map, has the coastal conservation plan uh, conservation focus areas, and that would tie into other uh, land. Um, hopefully, trails would connect. Um, but that's, that's the real success, is when you're able to, to make the trails connect from one community to another. Hey, thank you. All right, thank you. Next, we get into old business. Item A, I will recuse and I will let Mr. Rose take over at this point. Thank you. Uh, so item 3A, continued from September 18th, 2024. Uh, Russell Emikome, uh, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, is seeking a subdivision amendment to extend a culvert on a property located at 59 Milo Lane in the residential single family R1 district. So this is map 69, lot 2D9, sub number 06, 2004. I'd like to invite the applicant to present. Oh, me too. Thank you. Do you want me to go over? Ah, yes, probably should. Apologies. Uh, if the uh, plan director could address this item. Yes, thank you. Uh, so this application was continued uh, from the 918 planning board meeting. Um, 
for the following reasons for the director of public works to review and provide input on the submitted cross-section design um, applicant information applicant is requesting to extend the existing 12 inch diameter culvert under the driveway an additional uh, 60 feet adding backfill and grass over the culvert this law is in with the is within the cottonwood subdivision that was approved back in 2004 this subdivision was designed with an open drainage system and subject to the following conditions of approval there shall be a covenant in the deeds that states the homeowner can't fill in the roadside ditches the application was reviewed back in September at the SRTC. At this meeting, it was recommended that the applicant provide a cross-section design construction detail um, submitted by an engineer. It was also noted that if approved, the existing water shutoff can't be covered with the proposed improvement. Uh, planning just cautions the board in granting this request for drainage improvements for the precedent it will set and the potential for the overall parcels within the subdivisions to fill in drainage ditches. That was part of the overall subdivision plan. Thank you, Director Mears. Uh, now, if the applicant would like to present. So um, I received a phone call today from Mike from Public Works. He suggested I get a, an engineer to draw. And I said, mentioned to him at the time, I said, Mike, it's $4,000. I don't have that kind of money. I was under the impression that the basic design I drew for what I wanted to do was accepted. They just needed someone to walk the property to see exactly what I'm doing. He said, well, it's, it's not, it's recommended, it's not suggested, it's up to the board to make the decision for you to continue what you're doing. I only suggested that because I have concerns about other people living in the, in the area that might want to do the same thing that you want to do. I said, well, my concern is this. My front yard is so short most of the houses in the development don't have a short furnace like mine. If my front yard was longer, I wouldn't be here. It's just a very short drop, and I'm just trying to make it a little safer and easier to cut the grass. And you know, I'm not looking, I'm not building anything on top of it. I'm just putting dirt and extending the pipe. The pipe is already under the driveway. It sticks out a couple of feet. I'm just trying to run it across the front a little more and cover it over. I'm not looking for uh, any problems with anybody. I just want to do the right thing, but also make it safe at the same time. And it's, like I said, it's dirt. It's not, I'm not building a structure over it. And I was asked to find out what a water shutoff was, and they came out two months ago. It's up on the incline of the grass, not anywhere near the culvert. It's already marked. So I'm in the safe zone there. If there was issues there, I, would, I wouldn't waste anyone's time. I would just move on. Like I said, I'm just trying to make it easier. My grandkids come over a lot. You know, they're going to grow up someday. But in the meantime, I want it to be safest also, you know, for me and the grandkids. And that's really all I'm asking for. It's all my expense. I'm not asking for neighbors to chip in. It's all my doing, no one else. Nothing further? All right. Uh, in that case, I'd like to invite anyone from the public who'd uh, like to comment to uh, uh, do so. So opening the public hearing. Okay, seeing uh, no one from the public to comment, I'll close the public hearing and I'll open up for questions from the board. I, I did have a uh, comment from the public. Yes, I did have a comment from the public. Thank you. Uh, so we received some correspondence from uh, Jason LaPere. Good morning, Anna. Please include these comments, photos, in the packet for the upcoming planning board meeting on September 18th. Dear planning board, in regards to the proposal for Mr. Omnicon to add 60 feet of pipe from the exit point of his driveway culvert to the entrance of the drainage swale ditch area that r happens to run parallel to my entire low-lying driveway property. I have the following concerns and questions regarding the modification of the property. Um, he states he wants to extend the 12-inch water runoff pipe around 60 to 70 feet from his driveway culvert to the side of the drainage ditch. Doing this will create a direct flow of potentially forceful and rapid runoff into the swale ditch with no opportunity for the land to absorb the water naturally over that distance as is the current setup throughout the entire neighborhood. Doing what he has proposed could overwhelm the drainage swale as was originally designed and 
could potentially cause flooding issues on my property, including into my garage and basement. I get runoff into the swell area uh, from both sides of the street, uphill and horizontally from the opposite direction, all funneling through the concrete culvert underneath the main road. There is also a primary transformer that sits low in the ditch between uh, two driveway culverts across the street from me that can occasionally be prone to water rise during winter frozen precipitation and rain events. The first three photos below are taken from my driveway looking uphill. Uh, the property is directly adjacent to my driveway wetland area in the photos. Uh, number two, with a normal storm rainfall of approximately one inch or so, water runoff enters the swale area beside my property line and driveway, which only sits at the elevation of approximately one to maybe two feet at high point above the bottom of the swale area. The final uh, two photos below are from November uh, 2023 after a normal rainfall. The red swirl I marked up in the photo is approximate location of where the proposed pipe would ex exit into the side of the ditch area. If the proposed modifications to the piping drainage is approved, can that guarantee that my property home won't be susceptible to additional water rise from severe rainfall along the property line. The city, is, the city required the builder to design this neighborhood with specific surface water management features to help avoid potential drainage problems. Three, also adding and burying this long pipe will likely get clogged with leaves and debris from runoff coming downhill over time. And as a result, the main road may flood due to the pipe blockage and water accumulating on the other side of the driveway. Frozen pre pre precipitation during the winter months will almost certainly block that entire length proposed pipe from draining my any rainfall until a complete thaw cycle occurs. Did Mr. Height of Civil Works New England perform any on-site survey or evaluation for this proposed minor field modification of the slope uphill of the property to determine how a severe runoff event would affect the drainage swell next to my property? And there was also additional correspondence. Um, good morning, Anna. In regards to the cross-section sketch, I have additional comments from the planning board for the October 16th meeting provided below. The sketch is definitely lacking detail, no elevations, slopes, or pavement or gravel material called out. The sketch appears to have been stamped as received by an administrator, but no professional engineer stamp. For an amendment to be planned out finished subdivision, this proposed field modification should get PE approval. Usually only see field requests for active construction. This request should get more than a field amendment, in my opinion. The engineer should rerun the stormwater model and calculations to compare what was approved in 2024 or 2004 with what is pro being proposed now. The flow of water coming out of the 12-inch open end downhill pipe directly besides where the water is runoff uh, is flowing under the main road culvert poses a serious risk of potentially overwhelming the swale and causing drainage backups at the road culvert. The city must have a file on the subdivision and knows of who did a review of the original approval. Was Civil Works New England even involved with the original subdivision approval? And that's it. Thank you, Director. Uh, comments from the board? Mr. Wendell. Thank you. I quickly referred back to the minutes of our last meeting as to why we continued this uh, applicant to this meeting, and it was to seek uh, a more detailed feedback from the director of public works and engineering staff which we got and in that memo that was dated october 11th from uh mike babinski uh director of public works uh, the, the recommendation if you read through it is that they couldn't make a recommendation because they lacked any of the engineering data as to how this filling of land of the drainage swale would affect you know sheet flow off of the the roadway so we continued this because we wanted information from the public works director we've gotten that uh, they can't support it because it needs the engineering data we've had correspondence here tonight which alludes to engineering data uh, i will say that i did drive up Milo lane and looked at the the subject property and would agree your front yard is short steep and there's no question that filling that drainage swale would improve the front yard I, I can't argue that but what I 
can't emphatically say is what effect, if any, it would have on the sheet flow uh, off of the roadway, whether or not it would enhance water flow to adjacent properties, may or may not, right? I just, I, I don't know. The thing is, minimal water comes out of that pipe, and where in the pipe, probably from me past the window before it hits the swale. And, and again, I think, you know, it's probably minimal water now. It may be minimal water if he extends this, you know, the, the length that he wants but we just don't know, right? Because some of that sheet flow off the road is being absorbed into the ground uh, in that drainage swale. So as much as I think it would enhance this property, uh, I, I'm, I'm struggling to be able to support this just because of the, the, the need for some of that engineering data. And I get that we don't want to spend the money on that. This, you know, we're looking for a simple fix, I get it, but and, I'm just not right. sure on that. And there's still enough grass for the rainwater to absorb I mean, on the front lawn, like I said, there's still a long distance from where the swale is. It's not like the pipe ends at the swale. It's back pretty far. You know, you're pro the whole length across the front is probably 100 feet. Mr. Barry? Thank you. Um, so I completely echo um, what Councilor Witham is speaking to. I, I can tell you, I, I used to practice civil engineering. I used to design subdivisions and drainage systems, and I can tell you, um, it, might not, it might not look like there's a problem, but there very well could be. Remember, it's all the land that's up, that's draining through. It's not just your property, it's what's coming from up the street, right? All that water accumulates. But what you're also not thinking of, engineering, engineers plan for major rain events. So we're not talking about what we got last weekend. We're talking about, you know, the big rainstorms that are, I don't know if you've ever heard of 10-year storms, 25-year storms, 100-year storms. Not that long ago, we got hit with two back-to-back 100-year -back storms that almost knocked out our dams, okay? The whole, the whole, this is a flood zone not that long ago. So we're, engineers design the site to prepare for what's going to happen in your area. And it might not look bad to you, but it could have catastrophic consequences downstream. Now, that, that neighbor that spoke in the correspondence, there could be some, some legitimate problems there, right? There's a transformer. That, that's a big risk. You can't have a water near electrical components. Um, for me, maybe being a little bit less you know, uh, dire and doom and gloom than, than that uh, dam breaking bit, um, yes, you make a point that you know, right now you have grass. G water will flow slower over grass, mm -hmm. true. Um, but if you put a pipe there, it's going, to, it's going to concentrate. It's going to, it's the same amount of water, but there's nothing slowing it down. So on the back side of that pipe, it's going to erode, right? That swale could fail. Um, it could knock out the swale, it could go right over the swale. So another thing that we ask engineers to do is design riprap, right? They need to reinforce, they need to grade. There's a lot of things that go into it. So I know you have good intentions. But for me, as, as an engineer, having practiced as an engineer, I, I'm all for engineering and having a PE stamp. I know it seems ridiculous, but it's the right thing to do. Plus, you know the it. swale is when you drops down, it drops down nine feet. It's not like it's a foot above the ground. And as far as this power, it, all the houses all have underground wiring. We all have our units outside. So, and the development is built in 04. So, if there was an issue of rain or snow, it would, something would happen by now. And all the people that live there have been there since the houses were built. I'm one of the newest ones that moved in. I mean, like I said, I'm not looking to create an issue or have a problem, but I don't know what to say at this point. Yeah. I what really I, don't. What I would add here is I, I think there's been multiple good points raised around the potential risks. When this subdivision was designed and built about 20 years ago, it was designed with an open drainage system. And <clears throat> we don't, or I haven't seen too many uh, subdivisions come in with that sort of system in place in the time that I've been on the planning board. There must be a reason for that. It's either a consequence of the topography of how things are, set, are structured out there, the soils, something there, or it was just more common there. Regardless of the source of that, this subdivision was designed with open drainage systems in mind. Um, and we also have in place uh, covenants apparently on the deeds associated with this subdivision that require those open drainage systems be maintained. So if we were to permit 
you to do what you're asking here uh, without fully engineered work to determine that it doesn't create a problem. We do open the door to your neighbors doing the same and potentially compounding issues that are there. We also essentially override an engineering decision that was made 20 years ago and has worked. So I have significant concerns about this without a professional engineer looking at it. And I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but small changes to these drainage systems can have major impacts. I grew up as a, in, in my early childhood in a major flooding area and lived in a riverfront apartment. I've seen what happens in 100-year storms with existing conditions. And if we alter them from what they were designed for, we increase the risk. I can't say whether this is a good idea or a bad idea. The fact that I can't say it's a good idea leads me to not want to move ahead with it without an engineer saying it's a good idea. Can I hear something? Back in July, Steve Height came out to my property and walked the property completely. His suggestion was to set 60 feet, not 70 to 80. That is a problem. Same thing with back along the fence. Stay, without, stay within the buffer of the wetlands when we first met the first time back in May. So I pulled out the permit for the wetland buffer and stayed before the buffer at 38 feet. And Steve Height said, look, Russ, if you travel that pipe to the swale, you're going to have a problem. They're going to shut you down right away. He even wrote a letter and signed it of his suggestions of this should be okay. If they need some drawings or something, they'll let you know. So I do a basic, basic, you know, because um, there's no guarantee that you would allow it, even if I spent the 4000 you could shut it down, and I'm at four grand. So if I was going to spend the money and guarantee it, I would borrow the money. But there's no guarantee that you allow it. The neighbor to the right of me, he has his own problems. I'm not looking to solve problems with anyone. He has his major issues. He doesn't associate with anyone. That's his issue. Try to be friendly with everybody. I'm not here to start an argument. I'm not here to put anyone down. But again, I'm just trying to make things right. Any other comments from uh, Mr. Horton? I'll just add that, you know, my comments really reflect here what's already been said. Uh, I'm re we really got to follow, I'm going to follow the guidance of the DPW director um, and um, as well as the concerns raised by the abutter. It's hard to, I can't in good faith make a decision in favor of the application without an engineered um, drawing, kind of outlining contours, drainage analysis, all those stuff. And uh, for those reasons, um, I won't be in favor of accepting the application as complete. Mr. Richardson? Yeah, I, I agree with what's all been said, um, especially with just what Mr. Horton said. To me, if there has not been any problem with the 2,500-year storm area, that means the system that there is working. And without the kind of information that an engineer can provide us, I'm not in favor of it. Mr. Whittle. Just procedurally, I think we have two uh, components. One is the application acceptance. That wasn't done at the last meeting. Uh, we do have uh, now a, a sketch, for lack of a better way, but I don't think that that is what we're looking for. We're hearing about engineering. So I'm just going to cut to the chase. Uh, that uh, I do not find that the I'd move that the planning board does not find the application complete for review due to lack of engineering information. Uh, we have a motion to not accept the application as complete. Mr. Richardson seconds. All those in favor of the motion? I see none most unopposed. Right. And then I'd further Mr. move that uh, the request of uh, Russell Amicone from the subdivision amendment to extend a, a culvert to property at 50 in front of 59 mile lane be denied because of the lack of engineering information and the lack of uh, the application uh, engineering information. Motion denied for Mr. Whittem, second to Mr. Richardson. All those in favor of the motion to deny? Item is closed. Thank you.
With that item complete, I'll hand the chair back over to Mr. Lilly. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, with regard to old business B, I'll be recusing myself from this matter. Thank you. And old business item B, continued from September 18, 2024, Hanson Corner Realty LLC is seeking a site plan amendment to make revisions to parking and other site infrastructure on, pro on a property located at 375 Route 108 in the Commercial Industrial CI District Assesses map 58, lot 05, site number 08, 2021. Director Mears, anything to add? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this application was continued from the September meeting to allow for um, the applicant to submit a waiver request or uh, submit fully engineered plans uh, to show the dimensions of the proposed site layout, storage area, and parking mm -hmm. to be relocated. Uh, since the last meeting, the applicant has uh, sat down with an engineering firm but uh, in order to get those plans it's 60 days out so the applicant is back before us to see if he can uh, put up the fence in the area that's being proposed uh, remove the requirement to install the grass island along West High Street frontage uh, and, and he wants to repave the site uh, before December uh, planning uh, does support this request as long as as built are submitted uh, to the planning department and the engineered plans for the rest of it the applicant will come back uh, for a vote from the planning board on those items showing the locations so uh, the applicant is back before you tonight I take a motion to uh, continue so motion made by mr. Horton Second by Ms. Berry. Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? At this point, of the uh, do we already vote on the application last meeting? Okay. At this time, I'd like to invite Mr. Genetis to uh, make his presentation. Thank you, Mr. Director, uh, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, uh, uh, Michelle. Uh, so I was tasked at the last meeting to uh, speak with an engineer, to get engineering drawings, uh, to document uh, the changes that I had uh, given to you folks uh, on a marked up drawing. Uh, or, as the director said, uh, request a waiver to pre-engineer, uh, 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 approval for uh, submitting um, engineering uh, documentation. I spoke with John Shagden, the former principal of um, Ambit Engineering, who's now a, I'm going to say a senior engineer for uh, Haley Ward, who uh, bought um, Ambit Engineering between now and uh, 2021 when the site plan was created. Uh, he is absolutely swamped. Uh, he said there's not a chance I'm going to be able to get to uh, creating documentation showing what you want to do uh, within the next 60 days. So with that, because of that, that's why I, I'm requesting a, a waiver um, on the engineering plans, which at, obviously in the last meeting you guys uh, requested that I provide. Uh, I'm still asking for that. I'm still requesting that waiver. Uh, possibly with a um, additional requirement that uh, I do com have the documentation, um, the engineered plans updated and submitted by a date uh, for the record. So um, that's, that's where we are at this point. Uh, as far as other things that have been, uh, that are, we're working on, uh, we have a quote, and we're actually uh, proceeding with uh, installing the uh, ADA sidewalk as uh, shown on the original site plan documentation. Uh, hopefully that's going to be framed and poured in the next couple days, and we'll be able to get our um, plantings in place. 
Uh, that was the first thing that was required by the paving facility to get that in place prior to paving. Um, I've also talked with uh, Central Fence uh, regarding um, costing for two items, the equipment pen that we've requested to move from the Route 108 side of the property to the West High Street side of the property. I do have that first quote, uh, and I'm waiting for a quote on the replacement um, trash area to replace the existing one. Okay. So that's where I am. The window's obviously closing on the, on the, ex, uh, the reclaiming and paving uh, window. And I am here to listen to, I know you have a, a number of motions you're trying to vote on. I'm not sure if you're even, you're even gonna get to that, but uh, that's uh, where I am. Okay, thank you. Over to the public hearing, anybody care to comment on this application? Is there any correspondence concerning this application? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Seeing none, closed public hearing. Mr. Barry, questions from the board. All right, uh, just, a, just a point of order. Director Mayor, so uh, to make sure that we are, that I'm not confused here. So we're not going on everything that was here last month. We're only looking at specifically, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, items A, B, C, and E. Is that correct? That, uh, I think, can I speak? Because I'm the one who told her, so. Uh, you tell me who you somebody tell me <laughs> I'm a little bit to be honest with you I'm a little bit confused on what Raleigh's uh, Raleigh's requesting right now uh, I was under the impression that we're still gonna get engineered plans based off the discussion I didn't know there was uh, a request for a waiver from that yeah. uh, well th that's what the result that was the result of the uh, September meeting one or the other yeah uh, I, I uh, came in and said we couldn't get plans. John couldn't create plans that, so the waiver was the alternative. So that's where I am on the waiver. As far as what I'm asking for, Jason, uh, the nine items were part of the application, so I'm assuming they're still in the books. But the four things that I need to, to be able to pave the parking lot, the four things are the, um, I can't pave without doing the other. Because the, the fences have to be, they're telling me they have to be put in, the posts have to be set prior to the paving, or else I'm going to just, uh, you know, I can do it, I'll carve, it, carve up the, the $200,000 paving uh, <laughs> after the fact, which uh, mm -hmm. is not my first choice. Okay. All right. So, at least in to me, it still sounds like A, B, C, and E is what he's trying to propose. Uh, I don't feel really great about the others. But I'm willing to come to the table to talk about those four. And maybe that'll be enough to help you get where you need to go. So, um, yeah, I'm curious, have you ever cherry picked an application or is it all or nothing? Is that, is that, because that, I can tell you that for me, that's going to cause a problem personally. I, I'm personally, I'm okay with working with you to say, okay, um, those parking spaces in the front of the building, okay, all right, I can work with that. Um, if you want to do as built at the end, that's where I stand. You guys can feel how you guys want to feel. Um, I, tell me what you mean by that statement. So your your goal was to remove the parking spaces in the front of the building, correct? To, to right in front of the showroom. To add them. You wanted to add them. Right. Right now, there's two handicaps, and it seemed like it made sense to create the parking across the front of the entire front of the showroom, which is what I've showed in the drawing. Huh. I believe there'll be four additional non-handicapped spots there might be a fifth one by then or is plus the two handicapped. and you have handicap now uh, there's going to be two there's two okay they do, they do not exist yet understood um you know as far as the green space personally i don't have a problem with the green space it's already disrupted um personally i don't have a problem talking about that one currently the green safe that, that area is pavement just just to clarify that's the, it's an existing paved parking lot that somehow that green spot, I don't know if the board added that in, if John did it out of you know, making something looking flowery, or if you guys demanded it. I'm not sure how that 
how that all worked. I was not part of the. I'm not sure I wasn't on the board at that time, so I can't speak to it. Um, as far as the fences, I know the thing that was giving us all heartburn was that we didn't know where that we didn't know where they were going to be, right? So well, the I big the big problem. Have it on the drawing. Um, and and that's good. Um, the the big topic of the day was you know if we have to go after a compliance for whatever reason, we don't have something formal. We don't have X X X and X, right? We we need to know where those posts are going to be. I, 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 um, you know, before per and, what per what regulation requires that? I, I you know I don't something is doesn't sound right. I can't believe that. Are that we we require a site plan. plus or minus six inches plus or minus a yard? What do we what do we, we, we need an about? engineering drawing? Uh, it's really that simple. So. Personally, I'm willing to work with you to, to come back because you're saying you're going to have your engineer draft up drawings of, 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 of your what, site, right? Of, you're gonna, of, what's, of what's done. Of what's done. Okay, and that's that's the only reason I'm speaking up is that that maybe collectively we're, we're trying to work with you, okay? Because okay. otherwise, if we went based on the conversation last month, you'd be denied straight up, because right? Because? Because you have no drawing. Oh, right. Well, well. Right? So if you have, I guess the point is, is if there's an as-built and the other board members are amenable to it, um, we might be able to do something after the work is complete as long as we come to an agreement. So I'm willing to have those conversations with the board. So I'll leave it at that. Ms. Horton and Mr. Rhodes. Sure, I'll, um, I'll just um, comment and say that I'm, I'm still, I'm, I, I'm not in favor of amending a site plan without engineered drawings. So I'm kind of right back to where we were last month. I'd really, uh, I need to see engineered drawings and to be able to vote on it. So that's kind of where I'm still at. And I'm not in favor of waiving, um, approving a waiver to mitigate that. So uh, I'm still where I am last month, I guess. Well, Chris, you, you were the one who put the motion on the floor to accept it last month. Now you're against it because you don't have. It's, it, I'm, I'm not, I'm, it's not up for debate. Mr. Rhodes? So I lack a little bit of context having missed last month, unfortunately, but my biggest concern here, well, there's two. One is that I'm not entirely sure what I'm being asked to vote on. And we have a, a list A through I here. I'm a little uncomfortable carving chunks out of that and approving those tabling or continuing others until engineering drawings come in. The other concern that I have is that we just unanimously voted to deny a homeowner putting in 60 feet of culvert because he didn't have engineering drawings. We're talking about a multiple hundred thousand dollar commercial property work here that we're contemplating allowing without engineering drawings. Uh, oh, and I'm two, not totally two different things. I, I, you have a, you have a, that was a totally different situation. We have an existing property with existing requirements from the board. That you're looking to amend. I, I, that, based on what the planning department has told me, there's some number of those need either a waiver or an amendment. We're, we're looking correct. to change an existing engineering drawing without full drawings in place and full engineering work workup in place. I, I do not see the distinction apart from scale. Absolutely, to two different situations. Absolutely, two different. Uh, questions from the board? Yeah. Now, did we uh, vote on regional impact last time? I will entertain a motion on regional impact concerning this item. Mr. Richardson. Uh, I move that there is no regional impact. Motion made by Mr. Richardson. A second. Second by Mr. Barry. Discussion. Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Any other questions from the board or any action from the board? Point of order. I get, go ahead, go ahead. Mr. Horton. Um, so I guess uh, there's 
two paths we could go. Well, there's two paths in my mind we could go here. We could continue to date certain to the next meeting, or we deny the application for um, deny the application for not having all the required material or the material. So I guess uh, are those are two options. The, the question is, is that are those are two options really before us, or is there um, anything other? Anything else to add? Director Mayes? I did speak with uh, the applicant about repaving the site doesn't require uh, site plan amendment, but he would like to remove the requirement to install the grass island um, in the fence. Uh, but I don't know if the board wants to go forward with that. Uh, I was under the impression that the applicant was going to come back with engineer drawings after that for the, the rest of the items listed. The, the Mr. Rhodes. Just to raise a, a comment here to create some context for both the applicant and the board. Um, I own a little less than an eighth of an acre in uh, at the bottom of the hill in Summersworth, and when I replaced my fence about four years ago, I had to submit a site plan in order to do so. Um, it wasn't a professionally engineered one because it was a direct replacement, but the applicant's requesting to install a new fence on the property to amend an existing site plan to remove a grass island without a site plan. It's existing. The fence is existing? No, the, the parking lot okay. doesn't have this. So you're looking to add a new fence that doesn't exist today, not even a straight replacement. You're looking to add fencing on the property. I don't think Jeremy has a copy uh. I do not. So the original, uh, sorry, Mr. Chairman, thank, thank you. you. Um, the original site plan, they were actually supposed to cut out pavement of, as part of uh, some redevelopment plan. Um, and that's part of the reason why the application is back before us because we're, uh, the site is not in compliance with the original uh, approved site plan back in 2021. So we have a case where approximately three years after the site plan was approved, they're not in compliance, mm -hmm. and you're looking to amend that site plan to do something different today. Correct. I would encourage the applicant to bring their site into compliance with the already approved plan. I said I would encourage the applicant to bring their site into compliance with the already approved plan or to submit an amended plan for full consideration. If you want to speak into the mic, please. So, in, in, in lieu of what, that's a, that's a far cry from the result of the September's meeting. <laughs> the September's meeting was provide an engineering plan or ask for a waiver from providing engineered documentation. So, how did we get to this point? think because this was the already approved site plan so the board is saying that they're not going to um, probably grant the waiver for engineered plans okay. so uh, in order to come back for a site plan amendment you need to have engineered plans okay. for the board to review so what happens between now and next summer when we have the next window where we can proceed with coming into compliance do I go to jail do I start getting fined thousands of dollars? Do uh, what can I get a feel for what what may occur in the meantime? Because because you know the, the the compliance is not going to happen this year. This yeah, so I will work with Shane of, about the code compliance issues. Uh, you are. We have been trying to get this site back into compliance, and we have been meeting with you, as you know, and we have not pursued going after the fees at this point uh, because you have been working with planning staff. So uh, at this point, uh, that's a discussion between Shane and I. And that's not a board discussion. I have a motion. Mr. Horton. Thank you. I move that the request of Hanson Corner Realty LLC for site plan amendment to make revisions to parking and other site infrastructure on property located at 375 Route 108 
Site 08 Tech 2021 be denied for the lack of engineered drawings. Second. Motion by Mr. Horton, seconded by Mr. Rhodes. Discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. Since this is a public meeting, uh, may I ask, why would a board member recuse himself from a discussion on the agenda? What, what might be the outside influence that, that caused that? No idea. No idea. Just curious. Okay. Appreciate the help. You're welcome. Any other old business before the board? Director Mears. None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Next item is uh, item five, new business. Item A, Michael Davis is seeking an extension request of an approved plan for conditional use permit approval for after the fact excavation and alterations within the riparian and wetland buffer on a property located at 25 Otis Road, in the residential single family R1 district, assesses map 31, lot 49, CUP number 03 2023. Director Mears? Yes, uh, so the applicant is seeking extension of a 120 day period to address the conditions that must be uh, met prior to the final approval. The final plan shall bear the stamp and signature of a New Hampshire licensed land surveyor and a final wetlands restoration plan shall bear the stamp and signature of a New Hampshire licensed wetland scientist. Federal and state permits, all federal and state permits shall be in place before signing and recording, including New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services wetlands permit. The applicant is requesting a five-month extension to file and receive approval from uh, New Hampshire DES for after-the-fact wetlands permit. This would allow for the applicant uh, until April 7th, 2025 to submit final plans and state permits to the planning office. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to invite the uh, representative of Michael Davis to state the name and address and please uh, for your affiliation. And please Good evening. Make a presentation. Good evening, board, and thank you for your time. My name is Marsha Brown with NH Brown Law, and Michael Davis retained me to represent him in this matter, which has a long history of um, trying to get him into compliance. And um, since my involvement early, uh, early 2024, I, you know, we've reassembled the engineer, the wetland scientist. We got a restoration plan, uh, which was expensive to obtain, but we got that plan and got approval uh, for the con uh, a preliminary approval of the conditional use permit. And part of that permit requires within 120 days to come back with an approved DES permit. The problem was this summer, uh, due to, well, I don't know if um, in your packet do you have the email from the wetland scientist explaining the delay? OK. So um, Mr. Davis was unable to pay a invoice timely and stay in the queue. And because, well, we, retain, we reassembled the team with Mark Jacobs because he had familiarity with, with the area. He is also a sole proprietor, which makes him cost effective. Um, but being a sole proprietor, it's not like he has other staff that he, when he has a, a log jam of work, that he can delegate to. So. Having fallen out of the queue and trying to get back into the, um, the workflow, um, I, in speaking with Mark Jacobs and asking him, how much time do you need, was able to get a commitment from him, knowing that the wild card is DES's turnaround time, but because he has a lot of applications with this particular reviewer, he kind of knows what the workflow is, thinks that five months should be enough for him to get the application in for December and have it reviewed and get back. My problem with that timeline is I need my 120 days to accomplish getting the DES approval expires in November. And so I'm asking that uh, for a five month extension um, of that 120 days so that we have until April 7th um, to submit the, the uh, DES approval. Thank you. 
So we have a public hearing on this item. This time I'll open the public hearing. Anybody care to comment on this application? Any correspondence concerning this application? None. Seeing none, close public hearing. Entertain questions from the board. Mr. Rhodes. Uh, just so I'm clear on the dates here, the request is until April 7th to come back with the approvals from DES or to submit the plans to DES? That is not to submit the plans. Okay. That is the, the conditional approval expires on November, November 7th. I'd like the conditional approval to get all of the prerequisites done to expire on April 7th, if that's clear. Okay. So uh, Mr. Jacobs intends to submit the plans this December to have returned from DES in April so that work can commence in the spring. Correct. Which I think was the timeline that we kind of expected work to happen anyway. We're so hoping to meet to the there. spring, yes. Okay, thank you. The questions on the board, Mr. Witham. Yeah, oddly enough, I, I do think the timing of this going into winter just quite frankly makes sense. Uh, the work would likely happen in the spring, so um, there's that, right? So I think uh, I, I can work with this given where we are in the time of year. Mr. Richardson. Yeah, I, I agree. It, this, it, for however long this has been going on, another five months is not going to change it one way or another. I, I might just comment, though, that um, our meeting in April would, uh, if it's traditionally on the third Wednesday, it would be the 16th. So I'd even go till the 16th for. <laughs> Any further or comments? Just the wording that would say our April meeting. Okay. Mr. Rhodes? Um, piggybacking on a couple of comments about five months not making a substantive dis dis difference here, if I can speak tonight. Um, I'd agree with that. However, eight months, ten months would. So I would request that you impress upon your client the importance of keeping to this schedule. Mr. Witham. Yeah, just to piggyback on Mr. Rhodes, I, I agree. I, I, we don't want this to drag on more than it, it, it really needs to. Uh, as the council representative to the planning board, uh, I can just share that uh, the property has raised the ire of many a residents. It's caused many of a, a, a phone call and email. Uh, so I'm glad we're at least at a stage where we have a plan. Uh, there appears to be a I won't call it a goal line, I'll call it a starting line in sight in the, the spring. Uh, so I am uh, cautiously optimistic that we can get there. Any further comments from the board? Anybody have a motion? Mr. Rhodes. I'll make a motion that the request of Michael Davis for a five month extension of the planning board conditional approval for the after the fact conditional use permit to complete conditions prior to final approval uh, be approved, noting that the date expected is the April planning board meeting as scheduled. Motion made by Mr. Rhodes. Second by Mr. Witham. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you for your time. Item B under new business, Rand Development LLC is seeking minor subdivision approval for a two-lot subdivision on a property located at Old Rochester Road in the residential single-family R1 district. Assessors map 67, lot 5F, sub number 05, 2024. Director Mears, is there anything to add? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The applicant is seeking to subdivide an existing 1.88 acre parcel to two lots. The lots are proposed to be serviced by city water and on-site septic. There is a noted wetland shown on lot F, uh, lot 5F1. A conditional use permit would be required for structures located within the 150 feet of the wetland. Uh, the applicant has uh, said that they do not intend to disturb the wetlands buffer. Uh, the application was reviewed by the SRTC at the October 2nd uh, meeting. This lot uh, complies with all zoning, and this is ready for the board to take action, except as complete. Application is ready for acceptance. Okay. Contain a motion for application. Mr. Witham. Move that it is complete for review. Motion made by Mr. Witham, seconded by Mr. Horton. Discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? 
This time, I'd like to invite Ms. Stoll to make his presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, board members. Bob Stoll at Tritech Engineering, Dover, New Hampshire. This is a, uh, a lot that uh, RAND Development owns. Uh, we originally did this subdivision for RAND Development back in, in uh, 1999, mere 25 years ago. And uh, this lot was created, it, at the time it was in the R2 district. So it, it was set up as, you can see the abutter at 5G uh, was, was developed as a duplex. But uh, more recently this, this, this area had changed to the R1 district. Uh, so the, the, the lot in, ended up being oversized for the, for the R1 district. So we proceeded with a, a subdivision complying with the R1 regulations. It is serviced by city water. We have, have done our, our soils work, our test pits, and received NHGES subdivision approval. Uh, it is on uh, uh, Route 16B, Old Rochester Road. Therefore, the driveway permits re re require uh, DOT approval, which we have received uh, from District 6. And uh, we hope everything's in order this evening so we can uh, receive approval here and he can get moving forward with his project. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Open the public hearing. Anybody care to comment on this application? Any correspondence, Director Mears? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Seeing none, close public hearing. Questions from the board? Okay, entertain a motion on regional impact. Mr. Witham? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd move that the project does not have any opportunity for regional impact. Motion made by Mr. Witham, seconded by Mr. Richardson. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? At this time, uh, I'd like to ask the director to review conditions of approval. Yes, thank you. Um, plan revision property markers along the front property line to be shut, shall be set with granite bounds. Please revise S2 landscape note L1, 2 to update sub subdivision section uh, 7, Roman numeral 8, 3, A, B, E, revise the water line information to 12 inch, conditions that must be met prior to final approval. The final plan shall bear the stamp and signature of a licensed land surveyor. Uh, please submit four uh, copies to the planning office and a PDF copy. Monumentation granite bound shall be installed at all intersections of the lot lines and street right of way, as well as the property corners, which do not abut the public right of way, per subdivision regulation 227C10. Uh, a surveyor is to submit a signed letter to the planning department stating that the new lot corner monuments have been set prior to recording of the subdivision. Conditions to be completed prior to the start of work. Future proposed development streets, structures, uses, activities, and disturbances, and changes in use within the wetlands buffer shall require a conditional use per permit, as described in Chapter 19, Section 13, Riparian and Wetland Buffer District Ordinance. All new service and connections from the utility overhead line shall be installed underground. The applicant shall apply for a new water and sewer connection or water connection permit. The applicant will be required to pay standard water connection fees assessed on new properties connecting to the water system. The development will require new addresses. Please submit a request for a new address to the city engineer. If a hearing before the E911 committee is required, this hearing must occur prior to the issuance of building permit. Per section 1923E9, the building shall display the designated address number in such a manner as to be plainly visible from the street which it abuts the main entrance to the property. Such number shall be a minimum of 3.5 inches in height and must be reflective. The applicant shall obtain all applicable permits through the Department of Public Works or New Hampshire DOT as applicable. This shall include but not limited to driveway permits and trench permits. Erosion control is required to be installed prior to the start of work. Erosion control shall be uh, maintained uh, throughout construction. Any breaks or breaches shall be repaired within 48 hours. Conditions applicable during and after construction. Black backflow devices shall be installed prior to the certificate of occupancy. All new subdivision lots shall be required to have a foundation certificate survey prior to the issuance of certificate of occupancy. 
There shall be no wetlands de uh, degradation during construction. The new proposed lot once developed shall have a minimum of two trees, not less than two uh, feet, two inches in caliper in the front yard. These trees may be retained from the existing on-site trees or new plantings prior to the issu issuance of certificate of occupancy. All set? Yes. Thank you, Director Mears. Mr. Witham. Yes, I'd move that the request of Rand Development LLC for a minor subdivision of Assessor's Map 67 Lot 5F for two lot subdivision be approved with the conditions as outlined by the planner this evening. Motion made by Mr. Witham, seconded by Mr. Rhodes. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. Great. Subdivisions approved. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Director Mayor, is there any new business that may come before the board this evening? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Is there any workshop business? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Communications and miscellaneous. Mr. Witham. Yes, thank you. There was a question asked of, of Mr. Genados as to why I recused myself. I just feel somewhat obligated to, to speak to that. Um, quite frankly, I just didn't feel that I could be objective in this particular case. I've done quite a bit of business with uh, Patriot Tractor, the, uh, the, the occupant of the property, uh, both personally and uh, through my involvement with local baseball. Uh, and it was just a perceived conflict that I had with it. I didn't think I could be objective enough with it. So uh, hence why I stepped away, both last meeting and this meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Any other communications and miscellaneous? Director Mears. We are still looking for a member uh, of the planning board to sit on the site review technical committee meetings, uh, if anybody is interested. Uh, when Paul Robitis uh, stepped down on the planning board, that role has not been filled at this point so so it's currently open any planning board members yes and it's uh, on wednesdays uh it's the first and third wednesday of the month at first and second and it is at 10 a.m which is a hard time for planning board members but is there any candidates for his uh, position planning board position i haven't seen any yet okay <laughs> any other communication miscellaneous mr horton um Thank you. <clears throat> Just looking to see if uh, maybe for the next meeting we could get an update on the Maple Street um, gas. Uh, wow, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? The gas mains that were um, sub yeah, gas substation. If we could get an update on that. Uh, I know part of the conditions of approval were to remove the existing gas field that was on the corner of Bartlett Street upon completing the uh, infrastructure. So just looking to kind of get an update <laughs> on that, maybe for next meeting. Appreciate it, thanks. Any other, Mr. Berry? Okay, so something I want to chat about. Um, I admit myself frustrated, to be honest. Um, after um, the business last month, um, I was concerned with the application that was Brent Ford. Um, I didn't feel good when I left the meeting. I feel even worse tonight, to be perfectly frank with you. Um, somebody once told me that the, uh, the road to hell is paved in good intentions, right? And I found myself two months in a row lowering my standards for something I knew to be wrong, right? We wouldn't let anybody else do a project without having a site plan in front of us. The fact that we let that conversation go is honestly, it's not okay. Um, Personally, I'm going to make a statement. I would like planning before a project comes before us to ensure that the drawings are there and that they're present. And if they're not, we need to deny that project. We need to say it's not okay because we shouldn't be in this position. It makes us not look good. Um, we came off poorly to the applicant two months in a row. Um, so I'm just going to let you know that's the stance I'm going to be taking moving forward. So, um, yeah, that's how I feel. Thank you. Any other communications miscellaneous? Entertain a motion to adjourn. I move. Motion made by Mr. Horton, seconded by Mr. Richardson. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Thank you very much.